Well, welcome again. You know who I am. There I am, fighting with vegetables. So that's the new future. Um, I'm, um, I'm a partner, I think, but I'm most of all food and beverage. And uh, we started that two years ago. And why? Uh, that was because we saw a big change in shopping centers, shopping streets, and at least in Holland, but also from our colleagues in London and New York. And uh, I, I started up the retail department at Colliers, but two years ago I said to my partners, guys, we should change, because uh, after the crisis, the shopping malls still have vacancy, uh, bankruptcies of retailers, and the food was going sky high. And we said, well, that's a good idea, uh, so let's make a plan, and uh, well, here we are now, bringing Griff to Amsterdam, and uh, we are quite successful for the first two years. Uh, we are going to talk about that with uh, a panel in a few minutes, uh, with Bas Buvelo, Leslie Bamberger, Arne Altman, and uh, Zin Ken Chung. Uh, but first of all, I want to share some trends with you, trends we recognize already today. Um, and that's one of the key things we, which is coming back is the experience-driven consumer. And they're really going to boost the F&B in the retail sector. When we look at this graph, you see the population going, growing quite fast and the income also. That's what, that will be an enormous effect for the F&B world we are going to face within the next 10, 20 years. And this one I like very much because after the crisis in 2008, there's a turnover index and the blue line is how F&B developed and the yellow line is how retail developed. So retail went down and is slightly climbing up, but the F&B is really t is in control of pulling the business out. Um, and that is a, a nice figure of how we live, how it was, how it's going to be. Uh, I'm from the baby boom generation, home and work really separated. And uh, the Gen X and Y, you see combining uh, working and living to, to, to together. But the future is a di digital native, so they're doing everything. It's like a 24-hour economy, doing everything with their phone, sharing everything. It's like the Instagrammable uh, uh, group of people. And, um, and the, the, what, what's the consumer about now, at this moment? He's becoming wiser, and he wants to, mer to have more authenticity. Uh, he's concerned about the earth, about the way of eating. What is he eating? Uh, vegan, you name it, um, and he's digitally bound. Uh, well, you see everybody taking pictures now and sharing and put it on LinkedIn and Facebook, but that's what we are doing. We're always with the thing we want to share, we want to call our friends, show what we have been eating, and that's what's happening. So that will change our economy. We are now more in a service economy, but we are going to an experience economy and it must be memorable, and uh, we don't want to be a client anymore, we want to be a guest, and we want to have sensations. And this one is nice, because especially the first one, 61% of the millennials prefer eating out over buying shoes. They are not going to think about, let's go shopping here or there, uh, but they, they're, 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 they're more about eating and sharing and be together with people. Uh, 40% uh, is spending more outside on dinner, which is amazing. And 72% of the millennials will continue to spend based on experience. These figures are, ha ha are having such a great impact on the future that you really have to think about it. Uh, the global F&B consumer, again, is also looking for authenticity. Uh, is more uh, getting eco-conscious, has never been so health-orientated. Um, so again, important things. And actually this figure I like very much, because eating was like a bare necessity. But on the other hand, the Dutch were quite innovative, because 150 years ago we also did share dining. And that's coming back. But we are looking now at self-fulfillment. So where the future lies, I want to go through some developments, the footholds. Uh, the F&B is creating the new reason to stay in shopping centers, travel hubs like airport and, and, uh, and railway stations, uh, the experience drive to choose, and the lines are blurring. So some examples of these things. Uh, the foothold, uh, we are going to talk about it, we think about it, and 
uh, we are also self-involved with the food hall, but the Grand Central Market in Los Angeles, very popular. Borough Market in London is growing still. Uh, the Mercado San Miguel in Madrid, great place. And of course, the food hall in Amsterdam West. It's a real hit, and uh, well, we are curious where it will go to. And the other, now, there was a film now here supposed to be, but it's not there. Uh, the FRB is creating the reason to stay. Uh, Leslie did an iconic thing in the south of Amsterdam, uh, which is a real hit, Gelderlandplein. I want to talk with him about it. Uh, the Magna Plaza, just behind it. We are building there now uh, a food court called the food department on the second floor with 20 kiosks. We had 120 attendees for 20 kiosks. We started leasing out last October and we leased it out within three months, these 20 kiosks. So that tells something about the F&B uh, uh, in Holland and what, what's going around. The Amsterdam support, we we're going to talk with Bas about it. It's the biggest shopping mall in Amsterdam and they are uh, making big plans of a big redevelopment for this area where people live, travel, work. And we are curious to hear from Bas uh, how they want to face the future in combination with the non-food retail and F&B retail. The Dubai Mall, everyone knows it. Ah, there's the Magna Plaza movie. So a short uh, uh, sneak preview of what we are going to do there. And uh, if you like, I can take you these days to show it, uh, what's happening there, but have a short look. We zijn hier in Magna Plaza. Je kan straks kiezen uit 20 restaurants en 3 bars. Dit is een monument. Het is een prachtig gebouw. Midden in het centrum. Tegenover het Koninklijke Paleis. Naast de Dam. Het is een perfecte plek in de stad. De Magna Plaza is in 1992 veranderd van het hoofdpostkantoor, wat het was sinds 1898, naar een winkelcentrum. Dat heeft 25 jaar bestaan. Eigenlijk nooit echt goed gelopen vanwege de mix aan winkels. Rieten wordt meer een ervaring. Het verblijfsduur verlengende concept door bijvoorbeeld food en beverage toe te voegen aan een retail ervaring werkt gewoon. En dat is de reden waarom we nu een verdieping volledig aan het veranderen zijn naar een hoogwaardig foodcourt. This is what's going to happen. In this case, a monumental building, the former post office in Amsterdam, being a shopping mall for 30 years, didn't succeed. And the F&B, I can guarantee you, is going to save the retail in this situation. The travel hubs I talked about, you can see uh, the, the, the Pancras station in London and Bridge, the London Bridge station in London, they're not dark, ugly places anymore where uh, heroines are sitting and doing things. Now there are really hubs where you want to stay, where you want to have dinner, eating, do your shopping, uh, things like that. Gare du Nord, Paris and Utrecht Central Station in uh, Holland, a really nice place to be. Experience driven the choice, like Italy, we just heard an amazing story. Uh, the Net in London, former bank office, and uh, now a big hotel with 10 different uh, F&B concepts in it, amazing. The Shuffle Club and Nusret uh, also mentioned before. And then the lines are blurring, like the Kuchi Cafe. You buy fashion, but you also have a glass of wine or a cup of coffee. Hutspot in Amsterdam, the Rolfs Coffee and the Bianchi Cafe. So, these things is for our research department reasons, uh, reason to uh, use this input we collect and to put it in a brand map. And the brand map helps us in certain situations in cities with certain income and certain uh, uh, people around to choose which kind of concept will fit best in a certain area. Of course, this changes every time, but it's a nice tool which helps us. So, is F&B taking over the traditional retail? Uh, let's talk about it. What are developers, owners looking for? F&B operators and their challenges, and how can sustainable partnership and business models between landlords and operators be created? So, I would like to invite Leslie, Arne, and Bas, and Zing. Please have a seat. Yes. Mag ik midden zitten? Nee, maar je mag hier naast je zitten ook nog. So welcome, guys. Thanks. Um, Leslie, to start with you, yes. because um, you, sh you, you have been an innovator, I think, eight years ago by uh, making your plans for the shopping center Gelderlandplein. Yes. Um, because you almost have, I think, the right mix between a non-food retail and F&B retail. Can you tell us about 
the idea you had eight years ago and where it's standing now, because it's an amazing shopping center. Well, what, what happens when, when we started the project, we saw that there was, you know, people would like to have a more luxury kind of shopping mall. There were a lot, lot of tenants already with a high quality, but also a lot of tenants uh, which were not the quality we liked for the shopping mall, and the whole shopping mall itself was looking really bad. It was like a swimming pool, it looked really bad, it was open, white. So we said, okay, we either go very luxury, or we go the other way around and we stay where we are. So we started thinking of the project, we said, okay, we don't want to enlarge too much, we don't want to keep too many square meters vacant, and to see how the, the market is, is, is pressing the, the square meters we need. And eventually we said, how can we combine the fact that people like to shop there, but also like to stay there, to eat there, people live there, people work there, you've got the sales tax, which is very important for the area. It's one of the biggest uh, re um, office areas at the moment, which doesn't have a lot of restaurants either. So we thought if we can, you know, if we can make it the way we think we should, and bring the quality of kind of tenants we have for the retail, also for the for the restaurant business and all the maybe the coffee, like here's the Le Pen Quotidien in my shopping mall. I think the combination gives people the fact that if they go there, they can stay a little bit longer. And I think that's what's very important. I think the fact that when you have a shopping mall, you want to keep the people in, not only to shop for one shop and then go back. The fact that you can meet each other there, a place to be, I think that's what we made, on a high quality standard. And it's not only making it, it's also containing it in a, in a, in a way that it stays top of the bill, keep the tenant sharp, they have to really you know, focus on what they do, and we'll focus on what we need to do, and keep the, the whole place as, as neat and tidy and safe as possible. Do you see a difference in footfall before the development yes. and now? What's happening? Yes, but what's very important about the footfall, it's not said that if there's a lot of footfall, they have a lot of turnover. It's about the quality of people who are making the footfall. So for me, it's more important at that location is that the people coming in stay, stay longer and spend more. And I think that's what we need to combine with the tenants also. And I think that's working at the moment very good. And uh, Arne, can you confirm that as a lessee? Or do you see that Leslie is, is, is putting a lot of effort in marketing and the right tenant mix in F&B and non-food? Non Totally. Well, he was very. We were very. We were very happy with Le Pen Corinne over there. It's a very big store, but you see that Leslie puts in, you know, his personal touch. He created um, a shuttle service from the the World Trade Center to the Gelderplein, and also the cleanliness, maintenance. It it really helps with the people um, to get people to the Gelderplein. It's really. It's really working out for us. One of, it's our best store, actually, here in Amsterdam. Okay, that's good to hear. Good to hear. <laughs> and, and you Not even true, are getting... <laughs> 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 and then we, 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 we recently saw uh, <laughs> that you're even more getting non-food retailers out and bringing in other uh, F&B concepts. So very specialized, yeah, but like you know, fish. It's, 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 it's good to see that a lot of uh, beverage is coming in. And, you know, Italy had a fantastic story, but it's not said that you can only say beverage is what's coming in. It's also affect how your zoning is planned. So for us, there's like a maximum on the kind of restaurants or F&B we can put. And that makes it sometimes hard if you would like a big tenant, and we have already big tenants there, and we'd like to enlarge the F&B uh, part of it. It's not always said that the city will allow it. So that's a little bit how you balance within this in the, in the shopping mall. Bas, you're owner of the, one of the, 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 the biggest shopping yes. center in Amsterdam, in square meters, yes. in a very uh, interesting area where people uh, live, work, travel and you're making plans for a big redevelopment. Uh, wh wh what are your thoughts about the future and what should you bring in into your shopping center to make it really attractive? Because now it's in between a little bit between the multicultural uh, uh, area yeah. uh, it is in and it's not a very a popular bit. name. But, <laughs> 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 yeah, but on the other it, hand, you call you know, it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But on the other hand, there are a lot of people working and traveling, so uh, there's a, a great opportunity. Yes. Yeah, we, we don't speak uh, of a shopping center anymore. Uh, we see it as an urban hub. It's a place in the southeastern part of Amsterdam where people work. Uh, the ING campus uh, is now built next to uh, uh, our shopping center. And we are trying to transform the shopping center into an urban hub with a lot of new functions inside. And F&B is a, a big part of it. Uh, and I think also, the cultural diversity of uh, the catchment area uh, should be a unique selling point to the future uh, in F&B. So we are trying to develop a food hall which uh, all the flavors of the world are inside. But also because we got the workers who want to have breakfast, they, they want to have lunch. We have the, the inhabitants who are eating out of home uh, at, in the evening. But also during the weekends, we got a quite uh, a lot of 
leisure visitors because the biggest leisure boulevard of uh, the Netherlands is quite next uh, to our shopping center. And they also have uh, another question uh, about food and beverage that nowadays we, can, uh, yeah, we offer in the shopping center. What do you think the ideal mix will be for you in this area between F&B and the non-food traditional retail? And yeah, nowadays we have, I think, 10% of the square meters uh, is F&B. And I think we will grow, you saw it uh, in the presentation, to 25, maybe 30% in the future. And does uh, that something mean for your rent income? Because yeah, you can imagine food can not pay the, the same yeah, price. Yeah, definitely, as definitely. But... Uh, it's uh, just, uh, I told, we look at it as an urban hub, so it's not only uh, retail, F&B, but we are also uh, building a lot of uh, apartments on top. So it's uh, the whole business model we are looking at, not only the rental income of the shopping center. So that's... Okay, Zing, you did something totally different. You went in an area where there's no shopping model or something, what else, but you went into a, 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 a silent area and you created something magnificent. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I think we uh, signed our contract five, five and a half years ago. Uh, the food hall is now four and a half years ago. It has been, the building has been empty for 20 years. So um, I think uh, the whole building is 20,000 square meters. I think we were the last tenants in there. Uh, we have the hospitality uh, hall. 2,400 square meters. Um, I think we were also a bit lucky. The, the crisis was there. Uh, people was really, you know, difficult to get tenants. And for that sense, we were lucky to could yeah, do something different. I think they approach a lot of hospitality concepts in, in the Halle. And I think a lot of people said no, and we said, okay, uh, we have this great idea. Uh, we're gonna do a food hall in it. And what, that's how we started. Yeah, what unique is in your situation is that you have short-term contracts with your lessees. Yeah, we, we, we have a, a long-term con contract, uh, but uh, we sublet all the food stalls as well, and we operate our own bar. So we, have, we both operate and we sublet. So you have this kind of shared risk or opportunity, uh, and uh, the, the sub we, it's two, three, five years, usually. Okay. Uh, other uh, interesting, Leslie, you also do a lot outside the Netherlands. Uh, you're also d doing things in America. Yes. Do you do you see difference between the f uh, the things in F and B that are happening in America and will well, come off to we don't, Europe or we not? We don't have the lease of concepts what they have in New York or whatever the possibilities in Miami or when I come even Dubai. If you see all the concepts coming in there, all the franchises they give there, we miss a lot here. But that's only on the fact of F and B. That's also on the retail side. I think Amsterdam really should work on the level of quality, bringing tenants in. It's a big discussion with the city about the tourists, yes. the kind of tourists coming in. We don't want them for the wheat, we don't want them for the coffee shops. I think we want them for the museums and the good kind of shops and beverage and everything you can do on the canal. So I think uh, what is very important for us as, as landlords, but also for our brokers, for you also, getting the quality back into the town. I think that gives a quality also boost to the whole area. And I think in the city center, if you look at the kind of food and beverage which came in, you cannot even talk about food and beverage with all respect. You know, it's the ice bakeries and the Nutella stores. And funny enough, they give a lot of problems to the city itself because overnight they decided that every shop which is a tourist oriented shop cannot come in anymore, which is very blurry to say what is good or bad. If I would talk to Italy at the moment, which I will, um, <laughs> the best place in town for him. Um, <laughs> if I would talk to him, that's even affect how I s talk to the city to see if I can place him in a location where I would say it would fit perfectly and would really match the area, but the city is very, very allergic at the moment to whatever food and beverage comes in. So I think what we should do as landlords and also how the city should work is bring quality in. I think there's a lot of quality in the, in the room here which we can really expand to. And if the city gives us possibility to grow, I think it gives possibility for us to change around. And that's what we did in our shopping malls. As long as we're the only owner in the area, it makes it easier for me to change. I can buy people out, I can say, okay, we put you in there, we put you in there. If you're in a street with a lot of landlords and we don't have the possibility to combine you know, concepts or say, okay, you take him, I take him, that makes it harder. So I think what is very important that the concepts we see abroad, we try to get them in on the level where the Dutch people, and I think that's what the people want, the Amsterdam people would really like to see those kind of tenants. Okay, Arne, you're also with some stores in the city center. Yes. Do you see the same problem? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, the competition is fierce. We have supermarkets delivering food. We have caterers starting restaurants. We have uh, uh, the, the Uber Eats. And you see uh, that it's really, really hard to find the right location. And it's also about permits. It's really hard to get a restaurant permit here. And then when you got the retailers selling uh, food and beverage, it's, it's, really, it's really tough. So, and you can copy anything on the internet. And um, labor is also really tight because the restaurant, they grow immensely and there's not enough working for. So it's really, it's really difficult at the moment. And I believe the people are, are making the experience. So if you have the right people, smiling faces, then, then you can make a difference. But uh, yeah, the municipality well, is really, really well tough. Well, imagine Amsterdam at six o'clock, it's finished. At yeah. six o'clock, the shops close down and there's no, you know, there's no combination of leisure part of the whole shopping. And, you know, if you go to the bike or the bike of close at six o'clock or maybe seven o'clock, yeah. it's not the way it should be. It should be if you're an international city and you want all these people to understand what Amsterdam is and come to Amsterdam really to make it better, then we should also have a, you know, a different way of thinking. And yeah. that's what keeps it like. I have a shopping mall, the one we talked about. I got everybody to open seven days a week and set till seven o'clock, even with him. He finds it difficult to have the period six, seven, because it's not so busy. And you know, from six to seven, do people go home or they go and eat. It makes it hard to manage that in a way. And if you go to the city center where we are at the moment, that's even much harder. Yeah. Do you yeah. have the same problems with license in West or? Yeah, yeah, but the license is, is it's different because we have a, a, we sell alcohol, but the stalls don't sell alcohol. We have a really blurring concept, and then the the municipality is lacking behind, so they're not prepared for blurring concepts. Definitely with permits. Yeah. Bas, yeah, we you? see we see it the same in the southeastern part of Amsterdam. We got a food and beverage policy of the municipality from 2000. So we are trying to convince them to go with the trends on the market. Uh, we have a waiting list now for uh, food and beverage parties to enter the shopping center, but uh, we aren't allowed uh, uh, to put them in the right places anymore. So it's, yeah. Talking about partnerships between uh, le landlord and lessee, you see more constructions by bring yeah, you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feels that, really that, good. That, this, that. this is the moment I start talking about <laughs> this. So you want to say something <laughs> to each other? Or, uh? <laughs> No, I think it makes a big part of difference the way how you deal with your tenants. I mean, the moment you know them, you know how when there's a problem, when you interact with your tenants, makes a big difference. If you're a landlord, like you have somebody who's managing the property, makes a big difference. We like to know from day to day what is happening. If a tenant has a problem, they should come to us. I think that's how we manage our business. I mean, that's the way we like to do. I, I know I'm privately, which makes a difference also, because doing business with somebody you yeah. know privately is already uh, tough enough. But uh, at the whole, if you see how the tenants, you know, you have to understand your tenant, but they have to stand as, I'm not going to do what he does, and he shouldn't be doing it. It's not like a democracy in my shopping malls. No, is that, the same, is that the same for you, Bas? Because yeah, I see a lot of landlords right. still in Holland being very arrogant and uh, leaning back. But yeah, I don't think trends, that's the future. Long term, so no, it's, uh, the relationship uh, must be better and better because uh, we both do it for the consumer. If the consumer isn't there, uh, we don't, uh, the f uh, shopping center doesn't function anymore. Uh, who has the daily contact with the consumer? It's uh, the tenant. So we should work together more and more, uh, marketing, uh, doing together to attract the, the right consumers, the, the right uh, concepts to the shopping center. So relation, cooperation, it's uh, our key, key word thing. for the future. That's yeah, well, it. It's a combination because we as a Le Pen Corrigien, we need to attract the right people and target the, the right target group, but also, uh, let's say, you know, he has a marketing strategy, so he makes the Gelderplein a destination, right? And, and with the experience economy that you were talking about, it's really important that people come not only for one drink, but stay for a longer time. Is that for you the same? Because you're rolling out in Rotterdam and now in The Hague, you sign. Well, yeah. Do you do it with the same partners you, you have in the west of Amsterdam? or? Uh, the same, no, no, we have actually, on a sm small scale, we have the same problem, eh? because I have in Amsterdam, we have 21 tenants, so I also, we, we, um, uh, we doing the, the whole concept, but, um, so we still need to have a good relation with all the tenants, but our mission is, is, is to have local entrepreneurs, so in Amsterdam, we have local entrepreneurs, in Rotterdam, we have local entrepreneurs, and in the Hague, it's going to be the same, as well, so, yeah. A question for you, Arne, with what I told, the changing of generations, mm -hmm. uh, other needs. 
Uh, how do you uh, jump into it as a Le Pen Cotidien? Do, do, is, does it mean something for the assortment or drinks or uh, pricing or...? Well, I'm the area developer of Amsterdam, of the Netherlands. So that's more like a, a global thing. But at this point, there's not a lot of new things coming from, uh, from New York. So, uh, and I think the F&B is really changing with, the, with all the, the, the platforms of delivery and um, it, it's really hard, and the, the increase of the labor, it is really hard to have the old model of a restaurant with full service. So you need to have pay as you go, uh, grab and stay, grab and go. Maybe we need to rearrange the layout of restaurants in the future, because I believe if you see Sweet Greens in New York, you know, you go in, you get your salad, and you don't talk to anybody because you pre-ordered. And I think that is really important. And also with malls, people, you have to create a community where people mm -hmm. eat, live, work, and I think that in the future that would be the most important. And maybe you have shared uh, kitchens, or I don't know, but the yeah. old model of you know renting a big space, it, it, it's under pressure, I believe, at this point, in, in Amsterdam. Okay, you see the same? <laughs> yeah, I think it's important that we keep quality, and you know, it's about, not about only about food and beverage, I mean, it can be any kind of food and beverage. I think for him it's important he keeps his quality of Le Pen, that his coffee is still good, that people come there, they don't come in there and they don't feel right. I think it's a combination of everything. I think uh, we need to entrepreneur all the time. We as a landlord, it's not said that because we have it rented out, it's finished. We have to be very sharp on what we do. We have the bus line, we have our own bus line going from the South X. Um, is that uh, something which is a business case? No, of course not, but it's part of the, the shopping mall, how we deal with people to get them to the shopping mall. I think what is important, we should be learning all the time for what we're doing wrong. And I think if you're, if you're willing to look at it and, and spend money on that, I think as a landlord, I think that's most important. And not, you know, there's a lot of German uh, owners on the South X who have a portfolio and they look at the spreadsheet if it works or not. That's not how we work. I think it's very important that you're very close to your, to your tenants in a way. And that's very important for the shopping malls also. Not every shopping mall is the same. Yeah. If you go to Rotterdam, it's a different market. If you go to Amsterdam, we're very large in Amsterdam, so we feel what the market does. But if you go to Bussum or you go to Meppel, for instance, where I just opened uh, Meppel, you ask, where the hell is Meppel? Um, <laughs> if you would ask me if I buy it again, I would not do it, but I have it already, and I made a, a, a movie theater in there. And, and there was no movie theater in Meppel, so it works really well. So every time you look at the concept, is there a full possibility there? I think that as a landlord, should be the entrepreneur, and not only, I, I feel myself as an entrepreneur in, in real estate, more than an uh, investor in real estate, that makes a big difference. We like to think with the tenant, and at the end, they have to pay the rent, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. I want a long lease, they want commitment from my side, I want commitment from their side. It's good to have short contracts, but that's different when you have, you know, small, no, it's not small, but it's not the same as you have a shopping mm -hmm. mall, or you have an office building of 40,000 square meters. It works two sides. So I think what is important, you have to connect to each other. Zing, the future of the food holler? How do you see it? Can we have 10 of them in Holland? Or Not 10. I think, uh, honestly, for food holler, I think in the big cities. Maybe uh, Utrecht, uh, Maastricht, uh, Groningen, and that's it. I think the, a lot of food halls are popping up here in the Netherlands. Uh, honestly, this one that I think was, 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 was good that we didn't do was in Eindhoven. But I don't think it's uh, going to happen for every city. Last question, because we're running out of time. How do you see within 10 years the, the, uh, the amount of food versus non-food in percentage in, in Holland and globally? But where do you think it's going to? Is we, because we are now almost on 20% in, in Holland and 80 uh, non-food, and in London is almost 50%. But where does it go? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's going to be 50-50 somewhere. Yeah, it depends on the location, uh, just uh, like Leslie said. In uh, particular, some shopping centers, uh, you have maybe 15%, but you have a shopping center with uh, the tourism plus, where you go above 30%. But I think not only it's food and beverage and retail, it's also leisure and other social, cultural uh, functions are coming into shopping centers to, to create the destination uh, for the people. Leslie? I think there's a change. It depends which location you have. Yeah. If you have in Amsterdam, your location is different. If you look at uh, even Amsterdam support, where you're talking about, it's a different location. You have to think of how to deal with the, the possibilities which are there. Food and beverage is a good solution for empty spaces. Yeah. I think if you have big restaurants like Vapiano, for instance, or you take uh, Starbucks with a big concept, they opened up in the bank in the time when they had the largest European uh, 
location. That's, that's experience. I think that's what you have to bring to the market. I think we have to be on top of it all the time. Location, location, location goes about real estate. But the moment you have the good location, it's easier to talk about good or not good. But the most important is, if, can you do it also on locations which are not as good as Amsterdam? And if you are able to make food and beverage in the same level as the retail itself, and fashion or whatever it is, then I think you can succeed. I mean, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't know. It's also depending on municipality. I mean, yeah. it's not easy to change every retail outlet into an F&B outlet, so it's, I wouldn't know. It's a little bit the same when all the offices were empty and everybody said, yeah, you can make a hotel and student apartments and apartment apartments. Yeah, that's easy. Everything so can be an apartment. Uh, that's not going to happen as, as well. It's yeah. not going to be that every retailer which is or shop which is empty will be food and beverage. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It should be the combination. Yeah. And on Main Street, it's even there because everybody on the Main Street, you have many, many landlords, so they don't work together either. So that's not going to work. Thank you very much. Uh, I was wondering if there are some questions out of the from you guys or no? Then thank you, Arna, Leslie, uh, Bas, and uh, Zing. Hi. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.